human beings are moved by words in the right order, fact. Even human beings with no money are moved by words in the right order. Why do you think there's so much debt? So having no money or having no time is just again an absolute load of bullshit. On a mission from God. We sell everything by the who. So when I got you to do that role play of the gold, play, gold and silver session, it's for people who. It's the silver session is for people who. So when they say to you, what's your gold session or what's your 60 minute session, you don't say, oh, it's more time. That's a transaction. Yeah. It's for people who. Mm -hmm. Who's the iPad for? Who, who's the, the, the 16 gigabyte iPad or the, the 32 gigabyte iPad? Well, it's for people who want to put more movies on the, on the thing because they're traveling a lot. It's for people with three kids because they want to put crap loads of pictures of the kids. It's for people who? It, or who's the 16 gigabyte for? Oh, that's just for people who want to surf the internet and just screw around on the couch of an evening because they don't really put much stuff on it so they're not going to use more memory. So if I sold those two iPads by the who, by the thing, you'd confuse the shit out of me as a consumer. Yeah. Well, you've got more memory. What does that mean? Mm -hmm. Or you've, you've got better graphics. Huh, okay. How's that benefit to me? Because you as the Mr. Apple who loves Apple and loves the iPad, you understand what difference that makes to me. But me as the consumer, Joe Public hasn't got a clue. So when it comes to the discovery session, I've said it from day one, years and years ago, the discovery session is for people who are not quite sure, they know they need to do something, they wanna make um, progress with their health, they wanna get some clarity, they wanna get some certainty, but they also don't wanna make a big financial commitment because they're not there yet. Yeah. And I as a business owner understand that there are more people in the world like that they're now ready to hand over a hundred pound. But if I can build a business for the skeptic, which is essentially what we've built here, the skeptic, they're not ready to buy now, they have no intention of ever booking an appointment at my practice unless I build a bridge. And if I don't build that bridge, they ain't walking over it and nor should they, because it's my job as a business owner to build it. Step by step by step by step. Again, how do I get authority and credibility and respect? I figure out who my customer is and I build a business that is perfect for them. And when I've built that bridge, Guess what they never do? Walk back over it. Because yeah. no other sod in the world wants to do it. Yeah. Talking to a client yesterday, she had a picture, brand new clinic. She had a picture in her office of a, um, of a, of a huge like lagoon type thing, right? Type of thing you'd see on Indiana Jones with one of those woody, crickety bridges that goes across, right? And over the other side was this beautiful tree, right? And it was quite pivotal. And all you could see was the bridge and, and like this horrible, woody, old fashioned thing and then this beautiful tree over the other side. And she said, oh, what do you think of my picture? I said, I couldn't, you couldn't have picked a better picture if you'd have tried. You wanna know why? Because that represents the journey that your customer's going on right now. It's the beginning, the this side of the, of the lagoon. So down below them is like a, hundred, a thousand foot drop to a canyon with water flowing fast, with bricks and rocks and all sorts of shit. That if they fall, they're dead, right? And what we're expecting them to do as business owners today, all over the world, is to walk across that bridge, right, without any fear. So I'm at, like, you picture yourself, there's this bridge, and every time you put your toe on it, the bridge moves, and you're fearful as hell, and you might take two, two, foot, two steps forward, and then you go, no, 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 it's not for me. I don't like this journey. But I can see the beautiful apple tree on the other side of the, of, of the, of the, um, of the water, and I want that, I need it. That's the life that I want. It looks sunny over there, there's obviously a little bit of rain which I need to survive and exist. That's where I need to be. But right now, this bridge, it's just too rocky, like, and I don't trust it. It doesn't look as though it's gonna, it's gonna be safe. It doesn't look as though I'm gonna get to the other side. So my job as a business owner is to knock that thing down and put a big concrete steel bridge across it. And however long that takes me to build that bridge, even if, if I've gotta get them a thousand foot across a lagoon, right? Instead of this rickety rackety old thing, the Indiana Jones style, where you just know when he gets a third of the way across, like one of the ropes is gonna break away. <laughs> And then you know when he steps two, two more feet in, one of those old fashioned wooden like, plates that he's stepping on is gonna break and he's gonna drop through it. That's the journey that customers go on. And then you know as he gets two thirds across the bridge, 
some guy with a big bloody samurai sword is at the other side waiting for him, trying to chop the like the, the, the string or the whatever it is that's keeping on the rope. And some guy's chopping away at the rope while Indy storm, storms across the bloody bridge trying to get to the side where the Holy Grail is, the fountain of youth or whatever it is that he's after. That's what customers do. That's the journey that they go on for business owners today waking up. And if they can accept that, they'll be a lot richer because of it. And the world will be a lot happier and easier place to live in. So our world becomes a thousand foot. What do I have to do, all right? I have to take the time to start to build a concrete steel bridge across so that all my customers can confidently put their foot on the steel, on the concrete, and think, hey, you know what? I'm quite safe here. There's no, like, no one behind me with a sword gonna cut some rope down. There's nobody in front of me. There's not like three steps missing on this crickety old fashioned bridge. Like, I don't have to jump across it. I can just make my way at my own pace. And if there's something not there, Paul will build another bridge for me. He'll build another th 300 foot on the bridge. And the first bridge is the free information. So the first part of this bridge, where I'm putting the steel down to say, hey, just step your toe across and see if you'd like the first 300 yards of the steel bridge I've built you. Mm -hmm. And then, if you're confident, or you're not quite confident enough yet to jump the rest of the way, I'll build you another steel part of the bridge, which is the free discovery visit. And then if at the end of the free discovery visit, I still need to build a bridge, I'll maybe just give you a workshop and you can come down and you can spend some more time on my staff and other people just like you and you can figure out for yourself. You can look around and you can see that there's no snakes and there's no spiders and nobody's going to take your money off you and nobody's going to do anything bad. And then you can put your foot across into the world to see what it's like where this beautiful apple tree is. You can have all of the nourishment and all the food and all of the stuff that you need to survive. And I know that there's no need for you to run back or you can if you want, because there's a steel bridge there as well, but go. But I know you won't, because I've done the thing that no other business owner wants to do, which is build that concrete bridge. Putting the band back together. Okay. Da, 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 introducing the master of follow-up. This is the situation. So last week we went over um, follow-up and some psychology and some, you know, whatever. The, the process and the strategy. So we're gonna look at the script. I know you wanna change the script. So now you know what it feels like and what it's like and how, what I heard from you the other day, how like two things can change the whole thing. And that's kind of where I was going last week with it. I know like there's a few little objections and I was trying to like quash it and I was doing it on purpose because I've seen it so many times. I've had every objection. I've had every reason why it doesn't work. And I also know that it, that it does. And then I came in on Friday and she books in like five in the space of an hour. What you've got to then do is go, okay, like, I can have all of these objections and all of this whatever and all of this is not working and it doesn't work, which is what goes on. I hear it everywhere. Every client will be like, oh, well, that, you know, they, they don't want to come in. And it's like, no, you just didn't get the words in the right order. That's it. You picked up the phone and started talking about a report and there was nowhere to go. And the guy, then you said, is it a good time? The guy said, no. And three minutes later, you're still chit-chatting about the weather and how nice it is. Has that guy really got no time? Or was he just unsafe as hell? Was he just frightened as shit and he didn't want you to sell to him and he didn't want to make a commitment or a decision or anything because that's what he thought you were going to do. Three minutes later, I'm literally stood behind him going, like, keep fucking going. Like, keep talking to him, you've got him. Like, you've got him. He's, he's now broke down. The whole thing, he's now comfortably settled. He's been in H&M for three or four minutes and nobody walked over to him and pressured him and asked him for a sale. He's now starting to walk from area to area inside of the store where he's getting very comfortable and he's starting to match up that shirt with those jeans and those jeans with those shoes. But the moment you walk over to him and say, do you need some help? He's going to say no and he's out the door. But if you walk over to him and say, hey, what are you looking for? Nothing. Well, what are you doing in here then? See the difference in the questions? Do you need some help? No. Shirt goes back. What are you looking for? Now I've got to answer that one. That question there would put millions on the bottom line of most businesses who sell clothes around the world. Do you want some help? No. Shirt back on the rack, out the door. What are you looking for? Some jeans. Okay, what color? Black. Tight fit, loose fit, baggy fit. What do you like to wear them with? What type of shoes? Well, I've got these really cool Adidas trainers that are, you know, like this, so I quite like the tight fitting ones. Oh, okay. Any particular make, price bracket range you're looking for? What do you like to wear it with? Nice shirt, jumper, tight fitted t-shirt, you know, whatever. I think you'd look really cool in a nice tight fitted, whatever, come over here and have a look. How does that sound, Kevin? Closer to making a purchase decision? 
that simple with everything. There's never an excuse. Human beings are moved by words in the right order, fact. Even human beings with no money are moved by words in the right order. Why do you think there's so much debt? So having no money or having no time is just again an absolute load of bullshit, basically. So what we need to figure out is for you to talk through. So some scenarios last week where you had four, of, let's just talk and it'll all start, basically. Let's pick two of those case studies last Friday. Tell us about them, what you did, what they felt, what their objections were in the beginning and how you move them forward. And then you guys can maybe bring one or two of your scenarios to the table. One was a, a gentleman who'd opted in um, on the website for a back pain report. He hadn't, because I think there might have been a little blip and a lot of people hadn't been receiving it, but it's quite a good talking point anyway to say, look what I'm going to do, I'm going to get that shit out. But can I ask, is that, is that report for yourself? Oh, it's more for my wife than me, I think. All right, well, do my best on what's been happening. I'm going to get the report to you, but I just want to make sure it's going to be right for your wife. Just kind of social proofing it that way a bit. So he started talking. He said, I'm not doing 100%. They were getting on, they were 69. Got to know where they were going and, you know, he said, I, I want it to be well. We've got a big cruise. It's our golden anniversary. I said, oh, fantastic. So I was making all the connection about where they were going. And I was getting into his head more so because I was listening to him, but he wasn't exactly saying the words to me. But his wife obviously relies upon him. And I said, so basically as well for yourself, George, it's more about you needing to be there for your wife as well. Is that right? He went, do you know, he said, yeah, that's, that's what it is. That's the reason why. Now he knows why he's going to give up, first of all, his time to speak to you, and then eventually his money to come and pay. His money to come and get physical therapy. Make sense? Key word there, he didn't know why. He couldn't communicate it. They don't, we don't know how. We're not born to do this. So our goal is to get that stuff out, which what if he can be the carer for an extra year or two years? He will pay anything to do that. So if you're having a conversation about back pain, that's why he ain't coming down. So two things, or the, the key thing to understand here is peripheral vision and tunnel vision. Now, females are blessed with a wonderful thing, peripheral vision. They do, it's a fact, right? Females have peripheral vision, they can see it. What she saw there was another thing going on in his life, not the tunnel vision, which is the back pain. So if you're picking up that phone and your sole intention is to communicate about a report about back pain, you will lose 19 times out of 20. And the 20th that you book, you will have no clue how to replicate it. And it'll be a <gasps> one booked, but I didn't know why. She knows in instinctively why that person has booked an appointment with her. And it's not for physical therapy, it's not for back pain, it's not for relief of back pain, it's the ability to be a care provider for the wife. Every other business owner in the world has the Indiana Jones style, quick at the old bridge, you should been there for a thousand years, and like only Indy himself dare take the risk. The reality is, ain't many Indiana Joneses in the world who are prepared to take that risk to get across to the other side, even though the fountain of youth is waiting. And what a great analogy, by the way. When Indy crosses it, he gets the gold thing or he gets the old fashioned thing that he drinks from, and he has eternal life, right? I would bet a thousand people Standing on one side of that bridge, only one will walk, even though at the other end of the bridge is the fountain of youth and eternal life. In a nutshell, that sums up what customers do every day with every single business. Every business owner is asking them to walk across this thing which is going to fall or feels like it's going to fall at any time. And they wonder why they struggle in business. It's nothing to do with the product. It's nothing to do with the recession. It's nothing to do with the economy, Brexit, interest rates. Lack of money in the world, which is a load of bullshit. Lack of opportunity, which is an even bigger load of bullshit in the world. We can't find customers. It's like, what, there's like seven billion of them out there. Like, and I can access half of them now, by the way, on the internet in a heartbeat. So don't tell me that it's because nobody wants to buy. It's because you've got this rickety old fashioned bridge that you're making your customers walk across. Replace it with a steel one or a concrete one with a crap load of bloody pillars underneath so it can never ever break. And the moment there's a crack, patch it up and get them across the other side at their own pace to a world which is comfortable for them. Do that, then you win. That easy. The rest, it's trivial. So that's what a discovery is. And that's again what you need to, you need to feel when you see a customer ring you or hear a customer on the phone who's a bit skeptical, a bit, not really quite sure. Picture them on a friggin' bridge, like, and, and oh, like the moment that they put their first foot on that like crappy wooden like part of the bridge, the bridge starts to wobble. 
that's what they've done. And what do they do with me? Soon, the average guy on the street, as soon as they feel that bridge goal, what do you do? Back. No, 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 thank you. This is too scary. Because if I go another step or another step, then I could end up like what Indiana Jones does. And he falls through, but he makes his way up, but I'm not a superhero. That's, that's just what's going on in the head. So we have to replace that with it. So when you hear that, that's what the, the free report is for, to start with some free information. Like what happened yesterday, one of our, our um, appointments yesterday was a walk-in in Gisborough a few days ago, which we followed up on. So they walked into the clinic and it was like, okay, I'm, I'm two steps on, but I'm not going any further. All right, we appreciate that and we, we see that and we feel it. More importantly, we feel it. It isn't the, are you enjoying the weather when it's raining conversation. Even though you say, yes, I'm okay and I'm fine and I'm, I'm doing all right, we know you're not, because I can see. I can see it, I can see your physiology, I can listen to the sound of your voice and I can see that your eye contact's not there and I can see that you're looking all the way around the room and you're nervous as hell and you want to get out as fast as possible. I'm